Hello, in this video series, we're going to go over the apportionment problem of the United States, which is how to apportion each state a fair number of representatives for the House of Representatives that depend on each state's population. All right, so you've already watched some uh, videos on some of the uh, numerous techniques, Jefferson's method, Hamilton's method, etc. So we're going to review some of those in this video series but I want to focus also on a little bit more on the history of apportionment and why some of the uh, you know, politicians and uh, political scientists uh, prefer the different techniques that we're going to talk about. All right, so the apportionment problem is to determine how many seats in the U.S. House of Representatives each state gets. Of course, there's a lot more application to apportionment, but we're going to focus on the United States uh, Congress. And here is our most recent uh, census. They do uh, the federal government, the United States federal government does a census every 10 years. So there'll be another census in 2020. And then these numbers could change after that census. But um, in 2010, there was a census and the United States population estimated to be about 309 million. And notice in red here, this is the total number of Congress that represent all of the United States. So the, um, the House of Representatives has a total of 435 members. So I just want to note right here, it's going to be very different when we go back to 1790. But currently, uh, each uh, congressperson represents about 700,000 constituents, 700,000 citizens. This varies a little bit from each um, district to district. But this is, you know, they try to keep this about fixed. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right, and um, hopefully you've already looked at the apportionment project. You've started the homework. You're starting to realize that this problem is a math problem. It really has a lot to do with rounding and decimals, as we're going to talk about um, more so in these videos. All right, so here was the first census. It was done in 1790. And as you can see, this is the first apportionment um, of population census. So there's the uh, initial colonies, or initial states, excuse me, and all their populations. Just to point out, uh, before we move on, the total size of the country in 1790 is smaller than the city of Los Angeles right now. Los Angeles has over 3 million and 700,000 via the last census. All right, so looking at uh, some of your proposals, some of your various house sizes on your project, uh, just to note H equals 69. This was the 19, 1792 house size, started at 69 representatives. I think most of the proposals ended up somewhere between 100 members of the House to 105, 112. If you get to 120, that actually is constitutional. But we'll talk about later. Anything over 120 actually is unconstitutional. So remember these. We're going to come back and look at 105, 112, 120. And again, these H values are all representing the total number of the House of Representatives. Okay, so let's look at that first apportionment bill, looking at that census. Oh, and there we go. So the city of Los Angeles, uh, a while ago, definitely going to be larger now, at 3 million, almost 800,000. Our nation has grown quite a bit in 200 plus years. Okay, so we have uh, the House bill. So the original House bill, this 30,000 is called the divisor. And what the House originally did was to divide each state by 30,000. Because this would tell then each representative represents about 30,000 citizens. So if we divide each of these numbers by 30,000, these are the numerical values we get. Decimals rounded to three places. And then what they did was cut off all the decimals. So even though Connecticut had 7.8, should have had 7.8 representatives, they cut off the decimals, rounded down to seven. 
I think maybe the most angry state at this would be New Jersey. Jersey had very close to getting six representatives, but they had to round this down to five. All right, so if they did this, then they get that total house size of 112. So if you got 112 on your proposal, then that's that reasonable. The Senate, the other branch of um, our legis legislative branch of the federal government, the Senate, remember, the Senate, um, each state gets two senators, no matter the size. So the Senate is not an apportionment problem. California has two senators. Um, Alaska, which has hardly any people, also has two senators. California has 53 House of Representative members. Alaska has one, or one House of Representative members. So the Senate, they propose dividing each state's population by 33,000. So instead of 30,000, we'll divide Connecticut by 33,000 to get 7.188. And then doing the same thing, dropping the decimals, they got 105 as their Senate bill. So why do you think the Senate chose 33,000 instead of 30,000? Think about what the Constitution says. Come back to this in a moment. So at the time, a Federalist um, in Congress they applied a new idea. So instead of just dividing by um, the total number of representatives you want each House member to represent, they decided, well, what if we multiply the House size by each state's population to determine each state's quota? So the quota is going to be essentially a fair share of the House. So a hoda, uh, excuse me, the quota is going to be House size times the state population over the national population. Now in the videos uh, that you watched before in our textbook, they say it's the, um, they take the national population, sorry, the house size divided by the national population over the state population. But if you flip the reciprocal, you get the same exact formula. And this was called at the time, the rule of three. The Federal and Congress said we should apply the rule of three so each state gets a fair representation or fair portion of the house. All right, so let's see how this worked in the initial house bill. Each state's uh, population divided by 30,000, drop off the decimals, get 112. Now, if we take this divisor method, uh, what we're gonna do is take the total population divide it by the uh, quota, the 112, or the house size. We want the total house to actually be 112. And then if you do that, you get like 32,000 or something, 32,280. So total population divided by the house size, and then take that number and divide each state by that number. So the initial quota for Connecticut would be 236,841. Technically divided by the total population divided by again this house size to get the 7.366. And there's a problem. If we look at the quota, we're gonna talk about the quota rule says if you go through this method, Virginia should get 19.5 Congress according to their fair share. So the quota rule says Virginia should get either 20 or 19. Right, the, the two rounded to the nearest whole number. But if we do the house divisor method, they ended up with 21 representatives. They ended up with more representation than their fair share. All right, so let's do this again. But say we divide or we take the house size to be 105 instead of 112. So we're going to do the same thing, take the total population, divide that by 105, and then that new number, we're going to take each population and divide that by that new number. And notice we'll get 6.877. So all these numbers are going to be smaller because there's going to be a smaller overall house size. And at least in this case, for this house size, there is no quota rule violation. So over here are the house seats. Virginia should have gotten 19, and their quota is 18.3, so it is within the quota fairness that Virginia gets either 18 or 19.
So if you look at all these decimals, um, the seats the Senate proposed should be between the nearest number above or below each of these quotas. Unfortunately, there is another problem. So with the Senate bill, the Senate bill um, favored large states. And whenever I say large, I'm thinking population. So California is a large state. Alaska is technically a very small state in terms of population. So notice you know, Delaware, um, Vermont, got kind of the short end of the stick. Their divisor is 1.683, but that got rounded down. If we take uh, Vermont, they had 2.592. They got rounded down. Um, and Virginia got a higher representation. So that would be one problem. All right, so let's go over uh, Hamilton's method. And I think this is probably the most straightforward method. If we take a house size of 120, multiply the quota. So we're going to take 120 times each um, state's population divided by the total population. And uh, this is this looks different, but it's, this is the exact same uh, process uh, as the videos from last week. We get the quota. The lower quota is the, the min rounding, just basically drop all these decimals. And then we're going to talk, we need to add nine more seats. We've got house size of 111. We're going to add nine seats. And we're going to add those on the order of the decimal size. So I think the largest decimal is New Jersey at 0.956. And then Virginia has the next largest at 0.926. So we're going to add in descending order. So New Jersey got the first extra seat from 5 to 6 then Virginia, and so on, until you keep adding until you get to 120 seats. All right, and this was the first apportionment bill passed by Congress that George Washington, President Washington, vetoed. So why did George Washington veto this bill? He did not like this bill for one reason that happened twice. If we take the entire U.S. population and divide it by the total house size, um, and this is why this bill was passed, each representative house member represented about 30,120 citizens. And this is fine. This is good. Remember, the Constitution says each house member can't represent less than 30,000 citizens. So overall, the apportionment was fine except for two states. If we take uh, Connecticut, they get eight representatives. You divide the population by eight. Each representative represents less than 30,000. And if we take Delaware, 55,540 is their population. Divide that by two, because that's their representatives. They got 27,000 people per representative. So these violated the Constitution. These numbers cannot be less than 30,000. So after Washington's veto on April 5th, 1792, Congress quickly passed the original Senate bill and Washington signed the bill on April 14th, 1792. So we're going to talk about this basic Jefferson method, the second method that was proposed and eventually passed in the next video.